Can the Leafs stave off elimination once again and stay alive and force a Game 7? We'll discuss on today's edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On At Least podcast, the daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. we got to talk more about Monopoly Go. It's this fast-paced game that lets you team up with your friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. So download Monopoly Go, now free on Google Play or on the App Store game on all right dave it's game six tonight another do or die situation for the toronto maple leafs do they got another big game in them i think so i think when you consider the pressure that's i think on boston right now like i feel like the obviously the pressure was on the leafs to keep their season live yeah game six now like you have to think there's a little more pressure on the brewers Obviously, the least it's like you lose, you go home. The Bruins right. like we still got that one more game cushion, and it's back in Boston. What gets me and why I'm nervous about this game is how poorly they played at home. Yeah, home yeah. ice has meant nothing for the Leafs. It hasn't meant anything. It hasn't meant anything for the Leafs all season long, but especially no, no, they they they've lost six straight in the playoffs on home ice. Uh, dating back to last year, and then they've also gone ahead and they've lost. I think they lost four of their la- or they've lost eight of the last twelve overall on home ice. Um, so for whatever reason, yeah, they've really struggled to play inside Scotia Bank Arena. I don't want to take you know the the cheap shots at the at the fan base and and blame the fans for the reason for why this team is not able to to wake up on home ice because realistically last year they had the same fan base they were just as you know quiet and it, it just is what it is and they had a terrific home record so i don't blame the fans so i'm not going to get into that conversation which leads me to the reason why uh it, they do struggle at home and guess what the reason is i don't know the reason dave i really don't know <laughs> like unfortunately i wish i i wish i had an answer we don't have all the answers people well, i call up sheldon i'd be like oh hey y'all do this at on home and then you do this on the road you should try and maybe do this that i don't have the answer unfortunately but hopefully you know the least can dig down and and really just like uh, copy and paste the performance from game five right like the way that they were relentless on pucks, the way that they were forechecking, backchecking, you know, playing tight, deep, playing responsible, driving to the net, creating scoring chances, getting in tight, getting in front of Swayman's eyes. Like that type of stuff is what this team needs to do to win. You know, they can't be cute with offense off the rush. That's That has not been a good recipe for success. So they really just need to play similar to the way that they did the other night. And they should be able to find, you know, just as much success, I believe, going into tonight's game big one for me is bring that urgency yeah like the, the game four was so hard to watch because i felt like they just didn't bring that urgency totally game five <laughs> like it was a total 180 night and day what yeah. they did and i don't i i really really can't explain it especially at the beginning of the game where the crowd is really amped that's when the crowd is at its best and it just they don't they don't bring it in the way that they need to. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, they didn't score first in game four. That takes no, the game five was it. the only game that they scored first right. in the entire series. So, so that kind of hurts too, right? When you don't get that opening goal in your own barn, and it takes away. Like I think it was Brian Burke that kind of said it. Um, I listened to him do some interviews, and he said. Leafs fans, pretty savvy. Like, they know Leafs let the first goal in. You're not feeling so good, and that makes the crowd nervous. So if you're the Leafs, getting that first goal at home will mean everything. No, 100%. You saw what happened when they finally scored first in the series. They won the game 
uh, in game five against the Boston Bruins. So I think that clearly is going to have to be key uh, for tonight's game is get the first goal established that, you know, this is going to be Toronto's game and make Boston chase instead of Toronto. Cause look, the Leafs have been in a situation where they're trailing Boston in a third period. And that team knows how to play with structure. They know how to shut things down. So, you know, you don't want to be trailing going into the final frame with your season on the line. You want to be in control and have the lead and try and shut things down yourself uh, so that you can force a game seven, play another day, live to play another game. Um, but in order to do that, yeah, like the, the urgency is needs to be there and they got to do it right off the hop. They did that in, in game five. It was a textbook opening first period in game five. I'm hoping that they can come up with the same amount of urgency and effort, uh, effort levels and physicality uh, and effectiveness ultimately that they did the other night in the first 20 minutes and try and carry that through all the way till the end of the final buzzer tonight. And, and if they do that, they'll have a good opportunity with or without Austin Matthews, which leads to the question, will Austin Matthews play tonight? We'll answer that on the other side and tell you how you can win an Austin Matthews jersey. We'll do that next. You're listening to the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. All right, game off. We got to pause here and talk a little bit more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that, but there's just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together and build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes that you unlock. And there's so much more to get. You can get some unique stickers, uh, cool new playing pieces to travel with, and hilarious emojis to taunt your friends uh, when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now. Free on Google Play or on the App Store. Game on. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. We've got game six tonight in Scotiabank Arena. Toronto Maple Leafs hoping to stave off elimination once again. And Dave, I think the numbers, according to uh, Dom Decision over at The Athletic, give the Leafs about a 20, 26% chance at this very moment to come back and win uh, the series. If they win tonight's game, that bumps up to roughly 50%. I think it's like 48% if they can get the victory tonight on home ice. Now they got the victory on the road the other night without Austin Matthews. We're still wondering what Austin Matthews status is going to be for this game. It's technically as of now up in the air as a game time decision, but it sounds as though a lot of the beat reporters aren't so sure that Austin Matthews is going to be good to go and uh, this mysterious illness slash injury uh, might cost him game six as well. Yeah, I mean, he was the like they at least didn't have a formal practice on uh, on Wednesday, so Austin Matthews did skate, mm-hmm. but that kind of means nothing when we don't even know what exactly he is trying to get himself back from specifically. Yeah, so I actually I was listening to the Leaf report. Um, Jonas Siegel and uh, James Myrtle from The Athletic, their their least podcast. Um, they do a great job. I really enjoy listening to them and listen to their opinions and thoughts. Uh, I th- think it was Mur- Myrtle, I believe, who said he believes it might be a groin, a pulled groin of some kind that he could be dealing with. And that's kind of what's ailing him and, and not allowing him to get out there and play. So they're... You know, again, it's just a theory. I don't think oh. that uh, he knows for certain, but he was just throwing it out there that that could potentially be the case here with Matthews. Well, the thing that, that kind of gets me is, like, the ones that are watching him at practice, especially the the morning skate in Boston, like, usually you're, like, trying to like play detective and see, is he, like, yeah. laboring somewhere, figuring, right. I don't, we haven't heard any of that. My theory was, and I post this today, 
like looking back, I'm trying to think of like, was there a play specifically that maybe could have led to Matthews, you know, pulling something or getting hurt? And I'm like, well, he did get tackled by Charlie McAvoy in game three. And he hasn't really been the same since then. And that yeah. was a pretty nasty spill. Now, again, I, that's just me speculating. I ain't coming out and yeah. saying that anyone's told me this. I'm just trying to play detective myself here, although I'm not the best detective in the world. <laughs> just going to go out there and say it. But that's that's kind of somewhere I, I wonder, is that an area where maybe he pulled something there in that situation? Possibly. I don't know. Who knows? They don't tell us anything. We're, no. we're not allowed to ask questions. Le- Keith's on a muzzle. He can't speak either to anything that's going on. So we're all just left to to our imaginations. And, and usually that's a bad thing in Leafs Nation because, you know, everyone always just assumes the worst, that there's some sort of other injury. And, you know, the uh, just like with Willie, when there was – all of the the conspiracy theories about what was going on with Nylander. Even today, I was meeting up with a buddy and I was watching the Jays game with him. And he he was like, "So, what do you think? Like, did Nylander do something to to get benched for a couple of games? Like, why would like why do you think he was out? Like, I wonder if he did something bad. I'm like, there's no chance no. that they would have like he couldn't have done anything realistically to get benched for two games. So, no, there was something up. The migraines checks out." I guess, or some other kind of injury, but it was not, uh, you know, punishment-based injury or punishment-based um, suspension, whatever you want to call it. But with Matthews, it seems like there is something here. Uh, and and he's doubtful, again, to play tonight, uh, which uh, they, they did it once, right? They did it once. They got through. They were able to step up in his absence, one time can they do it again though that's that's the big question can they get it done on home ice right so it's it's gonna be tough because as you mentioned boston didn't play their best in that game against toronto uh you know that they're going to definitely have a better game plan coming into into uh into toronto for game six tonight and at least got to be ready for it right off the hop they do no they really do and again with the trickle effect we talked about it and they were able to overcome that in game five because everyone kind of realized that we all need to step up. And I, it, it, it kind of galvanizes you when you are in that position. Some players thrive in it. Others are just like, yeah, it's going to put a lot of pressure on me and I don't know if I can handle it. The Leafs did a good job of not letting that be like, no one was throughout that game going, man, Austin Matthews, a, like absence is really hindering them. Totally. It, it seemed opposite as though it's like Austin isn't here. So someone's going to make the play to win the game. It's going to be one of us. So we got to, we got to step it up and be that guy, right? Matthew Nyes wanted to be that guy to make that play. Austin wasn't going to do it for him. So someone else had to, had to do it and had to be the dude to get it done. And, you know, Nyes, Joseph Wall, Max Domi, there was a number of guys who stepped up in Matthew's absence to, to get it done. And that's kind of what you do need also like uh, in a playoff game, you think back to, you know, the Tampa's and the Boston's and, and the LA's and, you know, Colorado's like they all had bit pieces step up and, you know, make plays at one point in another, like whether it's Nick Paul scoring two goals in a game seven, or it's Andrew Cogliano scoring a goal to take a game to overtime or Luke Glendening, Right. Like there's so many guys who you can sit there and and think back on and see all these depth players that have stepped up in in moments where, you know, you needed it. Right. And you could you could pinpoint, wow, that was a big game from that player that you weren't expecting. Well, that happened for the Maple Leafs in game five to keep their season alive. It really, really did happen uh, with with Matthew Nyes and Joseph Wall. You know, now you just need some other guys to, to step up around them as well and put some more offense on the board. We saw, you know, Marner did get an assist, and we saw them generate a lot with him, Domi, and Bertuzzi. Obviously, the McCabe goal came as a result of those guys being on the ice winning the faceoff draw, but it'd be nice to see them, you know, that trio combine for a goal, you know, and and put some offense up. And, you know, maybe John Tavares can get a goal. Willie Nylander, um, you know, is he yet to score in this series? Because he didn't score... Yeah, I guess not, right? Yeah, so you have to score in the series after scoring 40 goals uh, this season. So 
I think that, um, you know, without Austin, you got some depth players who stepped up in the last game, but I still think the big boys uh, will need to be the difference makers in tonight's game six, do or die. I really do believe that. And I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Mitch Marner to not only replicate what he did in game five, but I think also, you know, take it a step further and really cement himself as the best player on the ice. Yeah, I mean, and that and that's the thing when you look, talk about why the Leafs are in the position they're in. We said it before: the Bruins were take took the series lead because their best players were their best players. The Leafs have gone by in large part because their best players have not played to their standard, right? And that's not many teams. I don't like a lot of people can talk about the Leafs and the core four, how much money they pay their their top end players. You go around the league, there are not teams that are going to be able to get by if their top producers are not producing. No, it's just it's just the way it goes, right? Yeah, you're it's a team game, but your team relies on your stars to step up. For sure, for sure, and and even more so when the star is out, right? You need the number two and three guys, aka. Marner and Nylander to really step up and take hold and, and kind of be a, a 1A, 1B in, at the, in Austin Matthews' uh, absence, which, again, we're not saying he's guaranteed to miss tonight. He very well could feel good to go and, and be out there for game six, but right now it, it does seem unlikely that he's going to play. I would say his, his status is doubtful at this point. He'll probably give it a go tomorrow morning ahead of pre-skate, just like he did in game five, but you know, I, if, if it's only a quick little five minute twirl out there uh, and then he comes off and doesn't stick around for the whole pre skate, I would think that's an indicator once again that we're not likely to see Austin Matthews in uh, in game six. So we'll kind of keep an eye on what the status is there and keep an eye on, you know, all the, the beat reporters when practice starts uh, in the morning and see if Matthews makes his way out onto the ice and how long he stays out on the ice for all right, we'll continue uh, with this chat on the other side. And I still got to tell you how to win an Austin Matthews jersey. So we'll do that next on the Lockdown Lease podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and in the NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Game six, do or die tonight. Leafs with their backs up against the wall once again and might be without Austin Matthews once again. Um, but we are giving away a Matthews jersey. And uh, Dave, want to tell the good folks, the good listeners, some supporters of the podcast, how they can still um, qualify for the jersey. Yeah, so if you haven't done so already, please go and check the description of the podcast uh, where you can go and get the link to the Google form where you're going to fill out your information. Just like six, we have had 630 responses so far, which is good, but there's by over 5,000 subscribers on this podcast just on YouTube alone. There are also people on audio I'm hoping that are also getting uh, their I put it on both audio and video. I make sure to include those links up to date. People are also getting in the Discord too, which is good. Uh, just make sure you go and you fill out the information because when we do the draw, we're going to have to find a way to get in contact with you so that we can send this jersey to you. And maybe you'll have it for a the rest of this playoff run. Yeah, if 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 there happens to be one, I like <laughs> if there that. happens to be more games. Now we can't like, just make up games if the Leafs are eliminated. It's I like just... the optimism, Dave. But yeah, only five and a half percent of our subscribers have signed up. <laughs> uh, so we need uh, we need more. We need more. I mean, it doesn't matter to us. Like the the l lesser amount of people, the better chance everyone who has signed up have to win that jersey. But uh, you know, this was supposed to be a giveaway for all five thousand of our, you know members um but anyways y'all y'all got a couple more days 
couple more days to uh, to get it done. Um, so for tonight's game, you know, we 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 look at you know no Austin Matthews. They kind of just got to copy and paste what they did the other night. How much do you believe in balancing the scales? Right, you look at how things have gone against Toronto throughout this series, right? Their power play has been awful. Their penalty kill has somehow been even worse. And uh, they have yet to be able to get a victory on home ice. One of those three things, if not both, or all of those three things, should even out. What are the odds that tonight everything kind of comes together and we see special team success combined with home ice success leading to a game seven? Dave. Oh, like you, you eventually, uh, eventually at some point, something has to break, has to, has to end. You right. Think, you would think, you think like the big one for me, obviously is the power play. Like yeah. if they get the power play going at some point in this game, first off, everyone's going to be praising the Lord that they actually would get their prayers answered. Cause I'm sure a lot of people are praying that the power play were to score a freaking goal. Um, that, that to me is the big one here because the Leafs have gone quite a few calls at home, right? You think of game three when they had five and they did nothing with it. Game four, I believe they had three. Again, they did nothing. I'm hoping that, and you got, and the Leafs have to obviously be careful because you know that Marshawn is going to want a little retribution about what happened and getting himself a little embarrassed in game five there. He's gonna be when he, got, when, he, when he got dumped and tackled by the official. No, 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 like no. That? When when the ref touched him, him thinking it was a Leafs player and falling to the ice, then realizing, oh, it was a ref, and he got really pissed off and embarrassed by that. Oh, that's what happened. That's what happened. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. You know what though? At least we now know that Brad Marchand is allowed to sit in the penalty box. I wasn't sure the first couple of games i really wasn't sure yeah we like thought he, he was too good for his home like the 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 amount of crap that that guy was getting away with like i still look back to that stupid goal by uh was was it coil frederick the one where him and bertuzzi were going at each other frederick. and frederick goal yeah th- that guy's been one of the better players for boston in the series by the way they got to find a way to kind of maybe keep him at, at, at bay uh but regardless I still don't really understand how, like, there was no penalty on that play specifically. That was outrageous what he was able to get away with on Tyler Bertuzzi. And then it led to a goal, which kind of amplified it even more. Um, but we finally saw in the last game, you know, the penalties come. And that's kind of why I brought, you know, the 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 whole point about how things are starting to even out. Like, Marshawn finally starting to get penalties and it's finally started. Like it just seems like that win in game five is an opportunity for momentum to completely flip and swing into Toronto's direction. And what would kind of indicate that more than special team success tonight? Like, I think if, if they get the special teams going, I'll say it right now, they'll win this series. They will win. They score a power play goal. They will win the game, and I believe they will win the series because they'll come in bunches, right? Once they break the dam, it'll start to come in bunches. So that's going to be kind of the the key indicator tonight for me um, is can they win the special teams battle? They didn't win the special teams battle in game five, but they didn't lose it for the first time, right? They didn't, they didn't score a power play goal, but they didn't allow a power play goal either. Tonight, I think, is the night where they're going to need that little extra, that one extra goal, get that power play marker, and hopefully that's that's kind of the difference tonight to bring this game into a Game 7. No, exactly. We talked about what's been the difference in this series. Goaltending and special teams have definitely been it. Goaltending, they got, that, they got the edge in Game 5. Yeah. That's one. But it was, I feel like this series would have been it, way into the least favor if their power play was going. Like th- this, this should not be as close of a series if this power play was any, like even at a thirty. All we're asking for is like thirty percent, twenty-five to thirty percent. That's a lot, Dave. 
What do you, what do you mean that's all? This power play I'm is capable. I'm asking for 10%. What are they at right now? Actually, five, four. Like, what do you mean 30%? 30% would be league leading over the course of a season. That That's a lot. That's insane. 30%. That's where they've been throughout the season. That's the thing. No, they were at like 23, 24% is where they ended at the ended up at the end of the year. But can they, they, have, they were at 25 percent last year, though, dog, I'll, I'll take a 15 to 20 percent <laughs> power play 15 to 20. Could you imagine what an extra two or three goals would do for this team over the course of this playoff series? They probably have already won this series and have it wrapped up by now. If they would have gotten an extra two, maybe a third power play goal at some point here, this series probably would be over because they've controlled it at five on five. But the special teams has been the issue. And uh, I did see some positive things on the power play in game five, right? We saw a couple mm-hmm. of good looks. And you know what it was? We talked about this so much going into the game too. They got to play fast, right? They got to move the puck around. They got to move it side to side, get the goaltender moving, open up the defense, and then get shots off that way. And you saw the Leafs get a couple opportunities. Like Morgan Riley had a really good look on the power play. Good stop by Swayman, didn't score it. But that was just, you know, a lot of movement, quickly moving the puck. He kind of slid down and he got a shot off. Um, and there was nobody in net to no one in front to to block it. Swayman just kind of dove and was able to make the stop. He's a good goalie. But at least it, it, it was like, OK, now we see that this team can actually zip the puck around and, you know, get get shots on net. Now yeah. they've got to get shot the shot by the goaltender this time. Uh, but at least they got pucks on goal in the last one. So there were some building blocks, I think, in the last game that showed this power play, you know, the t- the little tweaks that they are making. Now, obviously, with Matthews being out, it's a big tweak, big difference um, in how the personnel works, which means big difference in how everything's going to operate. It did kind of start to look like, okay, there, there's life there. There's life. It looked decent, I would say. So... Again, if we're looking at momentum and that game five win as momentum shifting in the series, there's a lot that point toward the arrow going up for Toronto and their power play is another one of those things. The way that it looked in that game is allowing it to point up. So if they can finally just finish and get get one tonight, get one, heck, get two, go ahead, go score three on the power play for all I care. That'd be awesome. But maybe just one is all this team will need to uh, to to really set this team up for success and, and potentially win this game tonight and keep their season alive, bring it to a do or die game seven, go back into Boston. And you do that. You think that, you know, doubts creeping up into their mind going into this game. Imagine if they lose game six and they're going back to Boston. Now it's history is really starting to repeat itself. And that Boston media keeps bringing it up in every single press conference. And every time they talk to the players, they're not letting them forget what happened last year and that it seems like the same pattern is happening this season. And I think that is a benefit for the Maple Leafs, for the Boston media to keep throwing that in their face, uh, to keep that in the back of their minds. And maybe that'll work out to, to Toronto's benefit. I also just want to add the New York Islanders power play percentage. I know they, they bowed out early 27.3%. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to look at teams in that within that range, too, Dallas twenty five percent, Florida twenty three, Winnipeg twenty three, Tampa twenty, then it's a drop down to Vancouver at fifteen. And then you so, wanted you wanted thirty percent. You wanted the least- hey thirty percent. The Rangers, the Avs, the Hurricanes, the Golden Knights, all in that thirty range. I know, but you're you're, you're like we'll take thirty. Yeah, we'll take 30%. That's a huge number to have 30%. Well, I mean, it's not the Edmonton Oilers of 53.3%, okay? Yeah, I may true. even be better. I haven't seen if they score on the power play in this game as we're recording this. Yeah, like, probably will. High this team is capable of more than 10%, Mike. Like, let's go. Let's come on. Is it, is it 10%? It's got to be less. It's 5.9. No, they're at 5.9%. Yeah, 5%. At 5%. It's but I'm just saying, this is a team that's capable of aiming higher than 10 to 15%. But yes, Paul, but all I'm saying is all they needed was 10 to 15% to be in a better position than they're currently at. They didn't need to be at 30. It'd be great, obviously. Heck, go 25 for 25 on the power play. That'd be great. I'd ask for that. I don't think I'm going to get it. I don't think anyone's going to get it. But all they really needed over the course of this playoffs is the right 
like a power play goal at the right time, and this would be a completely different series. I truthfully oh. believe that, but it's been dreadful. It's been awful. The penalty kill has been, um, you know, just as bad. Uh, but again, penalty, the one penalty they took, the Nylander penalty they took in game five, they killed it off, didn't give up a single shot, the entire penalty. So that also trending upward. So there's a lot of things trending upward. The only thing that isn't is Austin Matthews health, apparently. Um, but outside of that, things do look good. So there's reason for optimism, reason to be hopeful that the Maple Leafs might be able to get it done, uh, which scares me because the Maple Leafs zig when you zag and they zag when you zig every single time. So now that there's hope in Leafs Nation, this is usually when they break your heart. This is always when they break your heart. They give you that little sliver. When everyone doubted them in game five, they said, ha, we're going to go out there and prove it to you. And now that there's that little sliver of hope, this is usually when uh, when when they break your heart. Hopefully they don't do it this time and things start to trend in the right direction. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms to receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more suiting and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Go ahead, uh, hop into our Discord channel as well, Locked On Leafs on Discord. Uh, the game day Discord is the, the chat's on fire. So make sure you pop in there and say what's up to, uh, to everyone in the Discord. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We're hoping it's not a post-mortem episode. We're hoping that we'll be teeing up another Game 7. Uh, enjoy the game. Go Leafs, go. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.